You know, a lot of times on this channel, we cover stories that relate to race issues in the United States of America because, if we're being perfectly honest, I tend to feel, and you, my audience, tend to reflect disbelief to a certain extent, that race issues are often overblown in this country, people are oversensitive, they overreact, and oftentimes people make a lot of something out of what really, in actuality, is a whole bunch of nothing. But the thing is... Occasionally, there is a story that crosses my radar that actually does fit into the category of at least racially insensitive, if not outright racist. And in this video, we're going to talk about a school lunch that was served that definitely crosses the line into racially insensitive. However, I do want to point out that overall, in the grand scheme of things, this is relatively harmless. It's just a goofy story of somebody or an organization that attempted to try hard and miserably failed, and we're going to laugh at it because it is, in fact, absurd. But before we get into this tale, before we talk about these racist cafeteria lunches, we have a sponsor, so let me chuck it to the sponsor, then we'll bring it back over here, and we'll discuss this whole thing on the other side. You will be better for that discussion as well. Low levels of collagen impact you in multiple different ways. Obviously, there's the ones that you know about, which are the sagging skin and the wrinkles, but actually your collagen levels can impact whether your nails are brittle or strong, or whether your hair has that nice sheen, or it's super thin and just not looking very nice. This is why if you're weak in one of these departments, you should go over to healthwithjustice.com and get yourself this amazing collagen supplement. It's got five different types of collagens, and this month it's on sale for 51% off, plus you get a free gift of some health and lifestyle coaching. On top of that, we got a 60-day money-back guarantee, so you could try it if you don't feel any improvement in your nails, your skin, or your hair. Just send it back for a full refund. That is Health with justice.com see the pinned comment or the top link in the description again that's healthwithjustice.com fix your wrinkles students and parents at a rockland county middle school sounding the alarm over a lunch menu item as cbs 2's alicia reed reports a meal seen widely as offensive was served on the first day of black history month so i just want to point out that the parents and the people in this area even though they're described as sounding the alarm actually didn't really overreact. They just pointed out that this meal, this setup for the first day of Black History Month was just a little bit over the top. And honestly, they went a little bit too far. You should feel very happy mm -hmm. that you spoke up. Yeah, I am. A mother reassuring her daughter after a racially insensitive lunch option was served at Nyack Middle School the first day of Black History Month. I just hope that they won't do it again at a different school or at my school ever again. So here you have a little girl, and honestly, the fact that it was a little girl that first brought this to people's attention is considered heartwarming by the mother, but it is also considered a bit kind of sad by me because that means that children are very concerned about racial issues at a young age, even though I actually do in fact agree that this was just a little bit over the top for a lunch menu, but let's kind of get into it so you can understand. Instead of Philly cheesesteak, broccoli, and fresh fruit, Aramark, the food service company that provides meals to the district, served chicken and waffles and watermelon. I was questioning, like, because they don't usually give watermelon. Look, food is food, and you shouldn't overall, in general, be offended by food at all whatsoever. Chicken and waffles happens to be delicious. When I was in Arizona for AmFest, I actually went to a chicken and waffles place that had Kool-Aid cocktails. It was run by black people. The food was quite good, but obviously that is leaning into some stereotypes, especially when you're a weird corporation that decides to swap this menu in order to honor Black History Month. Now, is this a tragic tale? Is this something that actually hurt anybody? No, absolutely not. Maybe it hurt childhood obesity by giving people this fatty like chicken and waffles, fried chicken and all that with watermelon. But overall, this is just a ridiculous company trying to do something, but obviously falling on their face. And I think we can laugh and not actually be outraged by this. And the reason why I'm actually on board to a certain extent with the people featured in this news story is because they don't seem to be all that offended. They're just pointing it out. If they had served chicken, chicken and waffles by itself, I don't know that we would be having this conversation. But the moment you add in the watermelon, 
that changed the whole complexion, literally. Again, I can't really be against this guy from the NIAC NAACP because he's making a pun on the news. He's having fun with the story, and he's pointing out, honestly, like chicken and waffles, that would have been good. But once they added the watermelon, I was like, listen, something is clearly and obviously going on. And to be clear, you shouldn't be offended by food overall, but it is not a coincidence, in my opinion, that they serve chicken and waffles and watermelon on the first day of Black History Month, especially when they had a Philly cheesesteak on the menu. Also, I just want to point out that the school lunches are incredibly unhealthy. Philly cheesesteak, chicken and waffles, these are not very positive options. But then again, when I was going through my K-12 through education here in New York City, every single meal, for the most part, came with french fries. So really not one to speak on whether or not I ate well in the public schools. Yeah, it's weird. It's like if you had somebody that was Asian over at your household, I'm talking about East Asian or Chinese, and you're like, I'm going to make you beef and broccoli or Kung Pao chicken. Or if you had somebody that was Hispanic and you're like, I'm going to make you tacos and burritos. Again, it's not offensive. It could be easily intended as well, meaning, but it's just funny. It's just goofy. And I get why people are like, dude, really on the first day of Black History Month? Seriously, and then you add in the watermelon, which we all know from Dave Chappelle's reparation sketch is something that black people actually don't like that much. Nah, you're wrong. In a statement, Aramark apologized for the insensitivity, saying in part, while our menu was not intended as a cultural meal, we acknowledge that the timing was inappropriate and our team should have been more thoughtful in its service. I just want to point out that I actually do not believe this. Maybe there's a troll at the company or something like that. But there's no way, unless they serve chicken and waffles every now and again with watermelon at the school, which I feel like would have, you know, kind of been reported somewhat in this news story, that they did this coincidentally on the first day of Black History Month. Obviously, this was intended to be a cultural meal. Now they're like kind of fumbling the response. And again, nobody was hurt or anything like that. I'm sure the food was just as crappy as anything else that they serve in the cafeteria on a regular basis. It's just a funny story of somebody or an organization trying too hard and that obviously being viewed as quite weird by the people who actually had to interact with this. I mean, again, you have the picture of Martin Luther King Jr., on the thing where they're serving the food and then on the menu they readjusted it to be chicken and waffles when it was intended to be philly cheesesteak I, I think we all know that this was intentional i think we all know that it's not a big deal but we all should acknowledge that this did happen and it's a little bit weird i'm it's, it's just this it's a, it's a fact but this isn't the first time our mark found itself in hot water back in 2018 another racially insensitive meal was served at new york university during black history month it included barbecued ribs collard greens cornbread kool-aid and watermelon flavored water when called out the company apologized and workers were fired now they did this way back in 2018 so they're like it's not the first time that it happened but likely these are completely different people and again it's the addition of the watermelon and in this case the kool-aid that just makes it a little bit over the top you're serving kool-aid as a drink to a bunch of college kids who likely do not drink kool-aid if you're going to nyu it's a near ivy league university these people are all about the organics but everything else on that menu sounded absolutely delicious barbecue ribs collard greens cornbread one of the things that black people definitely have right in terms of flavor is their food culture. It's undoubtedly because of their Southern roots. It's one of the reasons why I am always of the belief that Southern whites and American blacks are the most in common kind of group of people that we have in the country because they share a food culture. And yeah, this was obviously intended even back then to be some kind of call to Black History Month. But once you add in the watermelon and it's watermelon flavored water, so you know for a fact that's not even going to be that good. You're clearly trying to send a message. Again, I don't think this was like ill intended or anything like that. It kind of reminds me of that cookie shop owner way back in the day when Barack Obama got elected and he had the double chocolate Obama cookies. I think we can hold two thoughts in our head at the same time. One, people are kind of dumb. It's just a fact. It's just reality. In fact, I remember other activists saying that fried chicken being produced by these like white corporations like Chick-fil-A, 
KFC and Popeyes, which are all founded by white people, is actually racist because they're stealing chicken from black people, even though that's a stereotype. And those people can be set aside in the dumb category. But these people who are also like, we need to serve a Black History Month meal and immediately reach for those same stereotypes can be set aside in the same bucket as dumb people. I don't want them canceled or anything like that. I don't even want them fired. I think it's a little bit over the top that they fired people at NYU. But, you know, it's a university, so I'm sure they demanded their pound of flesh. But it seems kind of sad to me that people lost their jobs over a meal that overall sounded absolutely delicious. But again, it's definitely them trying to do a thing. Like, we can't pretend and not see that they were definitely trying to do a thing in this situation. It's not a big deal. It's not anything to be outraged over. But you can point it out and say, all right, all right, it's, it's, a, little bit, it's a little bit over the top. If I, on Cinco de Mayo, rolled into a place like a university or cafeteria with a whole bunch of Taco Bell, you would know for a fact that I was definitely trying to do a thing. I think we can all agree on that. I hope we can, but let's go further into this new segment. I thought they learned from their last mistake, but I guess not. You see, of all the parts of this segment that I actually don't like, it's this part right here where the girl says, you would think they would have learned their lesson before. You were in first grade at that time. According to these reports, you're a sixth grader. You're the one who identified this, meaning that in 2018, five years ago, you would have been in first grade. So the news reporters had to tell you that the company did something similar years ago so that they could essentially feed you this line. And I really don't like that. I don't, I don't like this idea that this one blunder, this one faux pas, that's not really that big of a deal. Definitely in the racially insensitive category. Let's let's be honest about that is something that is a pattern of behavior that needs to be told to a child, because at this point, you're kind of removing that child's innocence. Also notice that there's not a lot of parents featured here, because I'm sure with the crappy cafeteria food that they typically offer, that fried chicken and waffles went over way better. The interim school superintendent says our mark has committed to partnering with the school to offer training for its employees. Workshops that are focused around the concept of equity and institutional racism. Now this is the part that I absolutely hate. I said that the girl before was the one part I didn't like, but this I absolutely hate. The idea that you have to partner with this essentially a catering company to do equity based racial sensitivity training when their goal is to serve food and honestly all they should be told to do is to not try anymore don't do things that are meant to be culturally sensitive meals and problem solved is ridiculous and absurd you don't need to blow a bunch of money or anything like that you just need to tell people hey look pull it back if you want to do this just stop serving watermelon altogether. get it off your menu because that seems to be the thing that is catching people's attention watermelon flavor water in the nyu story watermelon with the chicken and waffles in this story just set that aside and maybe serve that with i don't know a hamburger or something just just get it out of here if you have to have it then serve it with something completely non-culturally significant even though hamburgers are named for german but don't worry we don't care about white people's cultures no more cultural meals nothing like that Cut it out, just get rid of it, and then we'll be all good in the hood. We'll, we'll be a okay. The NAACP chapter president says this incident not only points out the need and importance of people learning about culture, but also getting repeated sensitivity training. No, no, absolutely not. We do not need ongoing racial sensitivity training, and this incident does not prove that we need that. That is a grift. That is something that race hustlers sell to all different institutions, and we don't need to blow taxpayer dollars on it. Honestly, you just just follow the one rule, no culturally specific meals, and you'll be totally fine as long as you don't align them with specific dates or specific events. It will be all good in the hood. But yeah, I, I don't want the taxpayer to use this incident, which is a non-incident really. It's not a huge deal. It's a little bit insensitive in order to spend millions of dollars on this crappy training, especially again when you're dealing with an outside catering company that I don't know why they bungled this twice in five years, but I'm sure there was no ill intent behind this. You know, even though I largely agree that this was intentional and a misfire that is in fact harmless, as I've stated repeatedly, I can't help but point out that the comments under this video are so dead on accurate that they should actually be heard. So this one right here where this person who is called C. Shizuki says, you know, there are kids who are starving who don't even get meals, Yet here we are complaining about certain food items being racially insensitive. We truly are spoiled. 100% fact. 
This is pure privilege without a shadow of a doubt. And Cameron added, a mother convincing her daughter to make it a big deal for television, and then a smiley face. And I have to say, this goes to the point that I brought up earlier about them bringing up the NYU incident, which happened when this girl was in first grade. And finally, this comment from Ernesto Herrera, who says, I can remember about five years back, a lot of people were complaining about my company's June teen break time celebration where watermelon was served. He means to say where. They were saying it was racist and a bunch of BS. I had to inform them that the 25-year-long lady who worked there, who was African-American, came up with the idea because Texas is hotter than hell in June and she thought it would be nice to serve cold watermelon. Plus, she loved it and everybody else agreed. We all thought it was a great idea. I left the company for a little while, came back, and was surprised by the youngsters' responses. I guess they don't know the history of the company celebration. So yeah, while I do think it is intentional, and I am going super soft on the people in this segment, largely due to the fact that it wasn't a super hardcore, this is the most evil racist thing kind of segment in the world, I have to point out that this is 100% a first world privilege problem to be served a food that is delicious that you think might offend your sensibilities. So yeah, my overall take is that while this food is good and it's perfectly fine to serve it, I don't think it was an accident and I understand why people would not be outraged but why they would raise an eyebrow to it and it appears that's what's happened in this case. I expect the superintendent, though, because he has the virtue signal to go absolutely crazy, lose his mind, racially sensitivity training everybody, because that's what white guilted cowards tend to do. But for the rest of the people in this story, I think they all acted reasonably appropriately based on the circumstances that were brought out. The news wasn't overly outraged or anything like that. The little girl said she saw it and then the local news picked it up. It must have been a slow news day, even though it was freezing that day. You know, it's, 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 it's all fine. Now, with that being said, I would love your take on this dramatic issue, this dramatic tale, this tale as old as time, Beauty and the Beast. And let me know that take down in the comments below. If you liked the video, show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social medias, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about maybe a bit racialist lunches. Till next time.